Okay, welcome to our lecture online, and here's an interesting topic on nuclear physics, the damaging effect of all kinds of different radiation, and to give you a feel for how we can compare things, the typical exposure of a person living on the earth at sea level is about four millisieverts of uh, equivalent dose of radiation. So, since all of us pretty well live a, a lifetime without any problems with that, four millisieverts is considered a very safe limit. So don't worry about the natural causes of radiation. So in comparison, how much radiation do you receive uh, in these particular circumstances? For example, what if you eat a banana? What happens then? Well, banana does have radioactive potassium, and of course, once you ingest it, and before you digest and so forth, uh, you will receive some radiation from that, and that is typically in the range of 0.1 microsieverts, which is very small compared to that. So you can say that's somewhere about, about 0.0025%. So very small quantity of radiation as compared to what we normally receive from no normal exposure. What if you live near a nuclear power plant? A lot of people are very scared of living close to a nuclear power plant, but it turns out they tend to be fairly safe, and the typical radiation living, let's say, within 50 miles of a nuclear power plant is about 0.3 microsieverts uh, per year, and of course that would be 0.0075%. Uh, and uh, let me check that percentage real quick. So if I do a 0 0.0001 divided by 4 equals uh, times 100 equals, and yes, yes, I got those percentages correct. Just want to make sure. All right, how about an arm x-ray? What if you go into the doctor, you get your arm x-ray, because you might have a broken arm. Uh, the, what you receive there is about one microsievert, and so that would be about, uh, let's say, 0.025% of your yearly dose. So at all, no need to be afraid to get your arms x-rayed. How about a dental x-ray? Well, it turns out you need a little stronger dose for a dental x-ray, and there you get a, about five microsieverts, and so that would be about 0.125%. Again, very small percentages to what you receive in a normal year, so don't be afraid to go to the dentist to get a few x-rays taken. All right, what about the check x-ray? Well, now you receive a stronger dose again, and at that point, you're receiving something in the nature of about 20 microsieverts, about four times as much, so about 0.5% of the yearly exposure to natural causes. So again, very small compared to what you normally receive in a given year. Nothing to be afraid of. Feel free to go to the doctor and get chest x-rays taken when you need them. How about flying from LA to New York? Well, at that point, you're in an airplane for a number, number of hours, about five hours, at 35, 37,000 feet, depending upon what direction you fly, and so you receive more of that natural radiation. Turns out it's about equal to about two chest x-rays of radiation flying from New York to LA. So if you're afraid of radiation, uh, you don't want to get x-rays taken, well, it's even worse to fly from LA to New York because then you get about 40 microsieverts, which is about 1% of your yearly exposure. Again, you can fly 100 times back and forth before you double your normal exposure, and that's still within very safe limits. So even if you're a flight attendant or a pilot, don't worry about it. It's not that much more than other people get. All right, what about two weeks within the Fukushima exclusion zone? Fukushima is the nuclear power plant that got hit by the uh, tsunami. It was destroyed. Uh, it, there was a lot of radiation that, that came from that power plant, and there was an area where people were asked to leave. So if you spend two weeks within the Fukushima exclusion zone, I'm trying to think about what that number is. Uh, I can't quite remember, so I'm going to go to my little cheat sheet here. Uh, Fukushima, there we go. Um, one millisievert. Okay, let's take a look at that. One millisievert. So compare that to what we normally receive in a given year. That is now 25%. So spending two weeks within that exclusion zone area would have given you 25% of the, no the normal yearly radiation. So it would be fairly safe, really, to stay two weeks within that zone, do what you needed to do, but to live there permanently under these circumstances, probably not a good idea. So at least at this point, you're at 25% of the normal exposure. How about a CT scan to the head? I believe that's about twice as much as, as that, so that would be about two millisievert, or about 50% of the 
yearly exposure. So CT scans do require a whole lot of radiation. So compared to x-rays that are relatively small, uh, CT scans are relatively large in the amount of exposure you receive. But again, if you need one, it's only 50% of what a person normally receives from nature, and so nothing much to worry about. Okay, one year dose from the natural sources, that was our, that was our standard, so that would be four millisieverts. That would be one times the normal yearly amount that we receive from nature. And most of it comes from space, but some from the ground and radioactive materials around us, sometimes even radioactive materials in our home from the building materials. Okay, one hour at Chernobyl plant in 2010. So Chernobyl, we had a big nuclear disaster. The power plant blew up. They were able to put out the fire and tomb the, uh, the plant in a big concrete tomb. And so the exposure level now when you go and visit one hour at that plant site is about 6 millisievert, which is about 1.5 times what we normally receive in a whole year. So not a good idea to spend your vacation at the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl uh, because you would be receiving every hour quite a bit of radiation. How about a chest CT scan? Well, in the chest you need much more radiation than if you do it for the head and also the effective rate is much higher. So therefore, the amount you receive there is estimated to be about 7 millisievert, which is about 1.75 times what we normally receive uh, living on the earth for a year. So now you say, well, wait a minute, should I get CT scans? Well, hold off on that thought. You'll see in just a moment what, are, what the standards are for the amount of radiation you can receive. Now, it turns out for those people who live like in Denver at an elevation of 5,000 feet, Mile High City, you get more radiation because you're closer to space. Well, not really that you're closer to space, but there's less protection of the, uh, of the uh, atmospheric layer. And so at that point, you're at about twice the amount that you normally receive if you're at sea level. So notice that if you live at a higher elevation, you do get a little bit more radiation from space. So what is the safe limit? Well, if you're a worker live, working in an area where you might be exposed, like in hospitals, working with radioactive medicines, or if you work in a nuclear power plant or anything like that, at that point, the government has set a, a maximum permitted dose, so you're supposed to wear those little tags, and those tags, they, they measure the amount of radiation you're exposed to on a constant basis. It's cumulative, and every so often you have to turn your little tag on. They measure the amount of radiation you received. If at any point in time you receive a total of 50 millisievert in the period of one year, then you will no longer be permitted to work in that plan until that year has, has passed and you can start over again. Now at 50, of course, that's about 12.5 times what any given person receives in a normal year. So this is considered the safe limit. You can do that year after year after year without any no noticeable effects on health. Now, the dose limit protecting valuable property. Now, it turns out, let's say that the nuclear power plant is about to blow, there's some radiation leak, the radiation is quite high. Are you allowed to go in there as a worker and shut things down and try to safeguard the plant because the plant is very valuable property? And of course, the city or the towns nearby the plant are very valuable property. You want to protect that. Uh, the t then the government allows you to receive a higher dose of radiation, as much as 100 millisieverts, which then would be 25 times the amount that people normally receive living at sea level. So that is allowed. Uh, turns out that if you have to go in and maybe save somebody's life, somebody is dying or somebody has been injured, they can't get out of the plan, you want to go rescue them, then you're allowed to receive twice as much of that radiation or 200 millisieverts of radiation. Now you, now you know that you're at 50 times what a normal person receives in a given year living on the earth. And so again, at 200 millisieverts, the government, the, the government has done tests and they said there's no noticeable effects of that radiation if you receive it on a one-time basis. Now, to put that into perspective, if you receive twice as much of that, if you start receiving 400 millisieverts of radiation, which is 100 times what people receive typically living on the earth for a year, if you receive uh, 400 millisieverts of radiation, at that point you're going to begin to feel sick. There actually is going to be some noticeable effects on you. You start getting symptoms of fatigue, pain, exhaustion, things like that. Kind of the, the way you would feel when you begin to get sick from a normal illness. And so that means that you're now experiencing what they call radiation sickness. The dose threshold of fatality. So if you get all the way up to two sieverts, so that's 2,000 millisieverts, or two sieverts, which is now five times as much, or 500 times the amount that you would receive 
in a year living on the earth, then you might die. Okay, you will probably not die, but you get so sick that some people weak, that have a weak system, may indeed succumb to that and begin to die. So now you're beginning to get, you get into a very dangerous range of radiation. Anytime you get this kind of radiation, then usually you will be treated with special medicines under special care to try and keep you alive and so forth. But if you ever get to a dose so high that no matter what kind of treatment you get, you will die, that is deemed to be about eight sieverts. And that would be about 2,000 times the amount that we receive in any given year living on the earth. So once you get to eight sieverts or above, chances are you will not live. So much damage will have been caused in your body by all that radiation that your body cannot survive and will eventually succumb. So here you get kind of a nice picture of what radiation does to us and what the equivalent radiation doses of various types of sources. Hope you enjoyed this lecture.